we have here is essentially the electric drivetrain from a 2013 Chevy Volt. Uh, I've got the battery pack here, which I think many people have seen uh, pictures on. But we've also got the inverter, or both inverters, as I'll get into more, as well as the gearbox, motor, and generator there. Um, a couple of notable features. One is, if you're interested, there's a main safety disconnect right there. You can pull out, de-energize the entire pack. Um, the connections are made up here between the motor, uh, between the inverter and the battery, as well as between the charger and the battery. And I'll show the pictures of that there in a bit. Uh, as far as the battery, it's actually in a composite case here. It looks like it's a SMC sheet molded compound, uh, just really fiberglass and plastic. Uh, there's a series of a lot of bolts going around the side. I believe they're 10 millimeter um, heads, so it's probably an M8 uh, screw. And there's probably a, um, two or three dozen of them going around the perimeter. And take a look inside the cells. That's the next step here. So start pulling out all of these bolts. Switched over to the Torx. You can see the entire cover comes free. And you can see the general pack. I'll move the uh, camera over for a better angle here in a minute. But the general layout of the pack is broken up into four modules. Two in the middle, two in the back. They're actually uh, different size, different cell count, so they're not symmetric, which is unfortunate. Right here, the pack is all hooked up. Uh, I'm not sure of the state of the charge of this pack, but right now it's reading 372 volts for the whole pack. This is the disconnect that I was talking about earlier. You can see if I pull that out, voltage drops all the way. So nice little, uh, nice little emergency disconnect. It's a bit hard to get out. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually fused inside. It's just really two blade terminals going across that fits into that socket. But it's it's quite heavy. It feels like there's something more inside there. I might dissect this to figure that out. One note here, just taking off the battery cables, they pass it through this, which I believe is probably a Hall effect current sensor. Uh, I'll have to pull that open to see. You can get a better shot of the coolant lines. Obviously they kept it flexible so that they can be able to assemble and disassemble and also if there's any movement between the packs which isn't a crash then it would be less likely to leak. Alright, now to remove the front module first thing we need to do is remove these bolts going across here. We'll also disconnect the battery connections. Exactly. Very easy because all you need is a 10 millimeter socket. Obviously, make sure you're not going to short anything out in the process. Also have the cooling connections. There looks like just a piece of silicone hose between each module. And also running through here, we'll have to pop this out. They just slip out. This is the battery cable. It's actually just a flat cable. Not very high, uh, high gauge. I'd say it's maybe, um, if you were to roll this all together, maybe a two gauge. Alright, 
Now we've removed the screws. You can pull this piece out. Might take a little bit of effort, a little bit of prying. There, it's assembled with uh, what I would call tacky tape from composites days, but uh, yeah, just a tape that's oh, a little bit of adhesive. What you have to be able to remove the couplings here for the coolant lines, and then uh, once that complete, you should be able to tilt the whole battery backwards. Up on the top, this is part all for the battery management system here. Uh, it's actually the controller is under here. That's a little module that pops out. If you want to monitor or mat to use your own BMS, there's a couple options. Uh, obviously, there's those that say you won't won't need it. That would be the easiest. Uh, the second option, easiest option, was to be if there was a um, if we could crack the BMS system itself and be able to use it, or uh, if you want to do your own BMS, be able to track down these connectors and then be able to hook it up. Not necessarily just for uh, active balancing, but just for at least for monitoring the cells. These aren't lithium iron phosphate, so they do take more care in feeding than the list uh, than uh, because they're a, a lithium cobalt, if I remember correctly. And uh, there's temperature monitoring and cell monitoring uh, at each at each cell. That uh, uh, to be honest, I would not go without just from a pack safety standpoint. All right. Here we have the entire pack broken down into modules. So the entire pack is made up of a forward module, a middle module, and a rear module. Now each one of these modules is made up of combinations of 48 volt and 24 volt modules connected together in different configurations. In the rear here you've got what really looks like two modules together but they're actually all bolted together. We'll show that here and banded together in a bit. Uh, but there's a 48 volt module, a 24, another 48, and another 48 here. The front pack is made up of two 48s and a 24, and the middle pack is just 24. Also up here is the front housing for uh, for the pack, which shows where the charger uh, charge port comes in. And this is the main connection going to the inverter, the BMS connections, and then the coolant connections are here. We'll tear into that a bit later. I've been told there's a uh, heater embedded in here, so I'm interested to see that, as well as there is a uh, uh, what appears to be a uh, BMS unit here, but we'll have to tear apart and see. Now, as I talked a bit, uh, a bit earlier, each one of the modules has its own BMS. There is a control. BMS on top here comes out very easily. Just uh, three connections that comes into it, along with these uh, small pigtails that go to the wire taps for all of the BMS. And you can just pop out the harnesses there. Uh, each one of the BMSs has a discrete connector, depending on which module it goes to, with different wiring. Have the pinouts for that. However, on the other side where it actually goes into the pack, it is uh, the same pinout and same wiring as far as I can tell on each one of the modules, depending if it's a 24 or if it's a 48 volt uh, module. The connector is something I'm trying to track down right now. You can actually use the same connector in all, four, all locations, save there's a little nub here on the 48 and then on or on the 24 and then it's on the opposite end on the 48 just so you can't be able to mix them up so bumps right here for the indexing key is right here for the 24 and here for the 48 um, I'll tear into this later you can see the part numbers indicated there 
but uh, not really too interested in that right now. More interested in finding the connectors so that I'll be able to monitor the battery voltages directly through these taps. Be very simple to make up a harness, assuming you can find those connectors, which you got to imagine you can, and plug directly in. All right, so we'll pull, pull out the other BMS, and for Evaluation's sake, I've labeled all the different connections, so if I ever have a question of where something goes, I can put it back. Now, the module is held together on the sides here. There are, there are actually four bolts, and just like everything on this pack, it's a 10 millimeter socket. And then on top, there is a metal band. And the metal band doesn't there really has very little tension on it. You can pop them on and off with your hand. Uh, I like to do this with the plastic cover still on just to make sure that there's no chance of arcing across the terminals. But just a sheet metal band and you saw how easy it was for me to take off. Now the next step is actually removing the cover and for that we will need a flat blade screwdriver. Alright, so we come up with a flat blade screwdriver. There's just these little tabs here. Make be very careful that you don't reach in too far and cause an arc. Pop off the cover. You can see the exposed terminals. Just like before, be very careful. Dropping a tool or anything metallic across there would be a bad day. Um, see no watches and rings uh, while you're doing this work because there is a lot of energy stored in these modules. So, there's a pack here that's two uh, 48 volt modules put together. And then here is a tw uh, 48 and a 24. And they're all connected by these different bus bars. Some of them carry current. Some are just mechanical ones to hold everything together. So this one is actually not connected electrically. But still got to be careful pulling that off. You can see the difference between the electrical bars and the mechanical ones. I'm pretty sure this is a, it looks like a silver plating that they have on it, probably for a galvanic corrosion, as opposed to this is just a, uh, looks like a electro-galvanized or I might even paint in there. I don't have light in the shop yet, so just operating by daylight. But, well, I'm going to pull all these off. Now we can pull out all of the bus bars, put those off the side. Now this rear pack is interesting and different from the others because, let me turn it around here, the coolant does not come in the ends and come in and out like the ends, it actually comes in the middle with an unusual coolant connection. flipped it around so the coolant is an inlet and an outlet coming through here so the way the coolant flows in comes into this uh, plastic piece gets distributed down here and on one side it's pressurized for an inlet and on the other side it's pressurized for the outlet so the fluid flows in there's a channel that's formed by all of these stacks of battery racks and the coolant then moves through across the cell to the other side this is in a completely parallel uh, coolant configuration. Here we can see the ends of the two different packs. So this is the front pack here. You can see the coolant lines there. And then the rear pack is just blocked off on either end. And this is important if you want to retain the uh, liquid cooling, which I'd highly recommend. Then you're limited by how many different connections that you have. So really for this, 
uh, if you want to retain this unusual middle pack, obviously you can do four packs. If you want to get rid of this, there's a way to configure it into three packs. If you want to do it into more smaller packs, then you're going to have to either find more end connections or do something different. Now, <clears throat> for, so we've got the band off here, and the only thing that's holding all of these cells together is these 10 millimeter bolts, or they're actually 8 millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter socket on the other side. So if I So here is one long bolt. I'm going to slide this back in because like I said, that is the only thing holding all these together. So I'll slide it over here. One note on this, learn this on the other module, I haven't taken this one apart but I got to imagine it's going to be the same. Once you take those bolts out, it is fairly challenging to get them back together. Uh, for me, like was able to use a fair number of woodworking clamps to bring it all together and then be able to have the uh, put the bolts in. The reason why is, and I'll show you this when I pull off the end plates, is there are O-rings in each one of these uh, cell racks to make a fluid tight connection for the coolant. Well, those actually require a fair bit of load to uh, get a good seal. So when you remove the bolts, the whole pack ends up expanding a couple inches, really. And so you can slide the bolt in, but the threads won't re-engage. And so then the only way to recombine them then is, well, not the only way, but uh, one way is to use a series of clamps to clamp it back together, get the bolt started, and then torqued. Uh, I don't know what the torque spec is on these, but uh, it's not small. Fortunately, I'm fairly certain that I'm not going to be able to buy a Chilton's manual that will tell you how to do all this. So that torque spec may be something that will have to be just a German good and tight torque level. I like to back them all out slowly so I don't have one uh, holding all the torque and having everything, and there we go. And as expected, there's a little bit of extra coolant still in there. You can see that there's a fair bit of pressure there holding it all together. So now, Bring this around. So you can see where the packs have separated. And we have the central cooling passage. And you can quite clearly see where you have one 24 volt module and two 48 volt modules. Now we've pulled out the very long bolts here and you can see where, how it's broken up into the individual modules. You can't really break them up any further. There is uh, these plastic caps hold them up the rest of the way and these caps are um, looks like glued or ultrasonically welded down to the, to the racks below. Now on the end here I have the end plate I was mentioning comes off and right here, there's an O-ring uh, seal. Um, the way the packs are, the racks are designed with the trays for the batteries is that each side has a male and a female side, so they just nest in the exact uh, same, just in, regardless of orientation. So you take this plate off, and you could put a block-off plate on here, or you could put this as the coolant passage that I was showing before. It's in the middle of the module, or like on the and one uh, on the other modules, there's just straight pipes or elbow pipes, as the case may be. So now you can get a good view of it here. On this, these ends for these trays, um, the 
stamped, it's just a stamped steel pack helps to, or um, uh, end plate helps to spread the load over it for the tension. But really most of the tension, or most if not all of the tension is just for these O-ring seals. Uh, obviously it does provide some compression so that the packs, this individual cells were to swell, but I don't think that's the main function of them. So you can reconfigure this if you want to. You could move these together. I mean, I could put a uh, long bolt back, put the long bolt back in with the end plates, and then be able to have, uh, like right here, going up to this point, this is now identical to the front module, and I could put it back um, that way. Or if I wanted to go even longer, I could put three of the 48 volt modules in series. And um, you can see up top here the different connectors. But really this pack and this pack, as far as I can tell, are functionally the same. But the location and orientation of the, um, the cell tap connectors is different. It's the same exact connection, as far as I can tell, it's the same exact pinout. But for whatever reason, rather than using the same plastic uh, tool for the injection molding for this, they made uh, for each one and just had it flip around, they uh, had its own, own pack. So there might be some functional difference there. Uh, uh, probably the best I can figure is has to do with the location of these tabs for the cover. but. Uh, obviously, they didn't think that tooling investment was that big a deal. And this is the little 24 volt module here. So that's the uh, the rundown of the of the pack itself. I'll later on I'll tear into the uh, end bell the end housing here I'm showing with the different connections and see what goodies are in there. So I've been told that there's a, a heater embedded in here, and I'm curious to see what the uh, uh, BMS interfaces as well and but uh, past that I don't think we'll end up reutilizing this rather put this back into a usable voltage since the pack goes up to about four, close to 400 volts thereabouts fully charged not the GM fully charged but the actual the 100% uh, uh, state of charge that makes it difficult for most controllers to go up to there. I'm a big fan of the Soliton 1 and it really tops out about 340, 345 volts. So I may end up pulling out a couple of the um, 24 volt or one of the 48 volts depending on how I want to configure it. The nice thing is there are just two of the uh, 24 volt modules so I could pull those out and configure just the 48 volt ones and get un just under 350 volts and should be workable for uh, the Soliton controllers. Uh, obviously different controllers, different ratings, so uh, it's going to depend on an individual's application.